Hi and welcome to the sixth part of this tutorial on how to make a game with C++ and OpenGL. In this part we shall implement vertex arrays. And yeah, okay. So in your in your game the no class in the render method to remove everything from GL begin to GL end. Cast few though, yeah, we don't need it anymore as we shall do something else. Um, so a vertex buffer is basically a place in the graphics memory where you can store all of your vertex information. So like the geometry and the texture coordinates and the colors maybe. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, for now, we will only use geometry. So it shall only store geometry. Makes sense, right? Um, so let's create the data structure for our array and so type def struct n it will be a struct it's a basic c struct and name the struct vertex data vertex data um, it shall have a gl float position coordinates and it's, this is an array of three. So it's essentially a vector of three, three components. Then make this an, actually make this a capital letter. It just looks nicer. Vertex array, yeah. So vertex data, name the array vertices equals Um, so this shall have three components Yeah, we'll also add a Z component It will always be zero in our game Actually, it doesn't need, need the Z component because it's it's a 2D game So, but yeah So the bottom the bottom left ver Vertex Zero on all three Okay, I'll just copy this four times. Um, actually, make a macro define square size. This is essentially our the, the height and the width of a square, so 100 pixels. So for the bottom. Right vertex, just put in square size. Then for the top right one, square size and square size. And then for the top left one, square size in the I for the I component. Then so now for a buffer. The first thing we need is, an, is a, a variable to store our ID and ID is basically an identifier for a buffer so we can use it in our application. So it has to be an unsigned integer and so unsigned int and name the variable vertex buffer ID. Okay, and get initialize this with zero. Which and zero basically means it has no no buffer. Yeah. Okay. So in your constructor, the first function you call is a gl gen buffers. Um, in the first argument, you specify the amount of buffers, so that will be only one. And in the second, you you give a reference to the variable where you shall store the ID. This will give the variable an ID. Okay. Then we have to bind the buffer to our to our C application. So we can, can have only one buffer uh, bond at any time. So one vertex buffer that is. So gl bind buffer. The first argument is what kind of buffer we want to to uh, bind, and we want an array buffer and in the second one you 
give the name of the buffer so it's ID. So we want it. So we want to bind our buffer that we just created to our application. Then we have to send the data to OpenGL. To do that, we call the gl buffer data function. And we are going to send an array of vertices. So this first argument here is the gl array buffer. Then we have to give it the size of our data. So size of vertices. Then we have to give our actual data. And then we have to give it a usage hint. And this is basically a hint for the GPU on how it, it has, on how we shall use the data. And as this data will stay, stay constant, we can, we can say gl static draw, which basically means we won't change this buffer often. So this data will stay the same for most of our application. In our cases, it shall stay the same for all of our application. Okay, then we have to enable the data in the buffer and tell OpenGL to use the, the data. To do that, we have to call the function gl enable client state with argument gl vertex array. So we have to enable our vertex array. And then we have to give OpenGL all of the information about our data. So GL vertex pointer. So the first argument specifies the amount of, of elements in, in the array. So we have three components, one for the X, the I, and the Z. So we say three. Then we have to give OpenGL the, the type and there are floats. So GL float for the second. Then we have to give the size of, of the data type for data. So that's so size of vertex data. So we give the size of our vertex data structure. And in the last one, we have to give the offset between the data in our structure. Um, in our, so for now, it will be zero. So we can actually put it in no. But let's put in chill void. Yeah, so it has to be a chill void pointer. Do an offset of our vertex data and the position coordinates. So this will be the zero for now, but later it will be something else. Okay, and to actually draw our group, go to your render method and call the function gldraw arrays. The first specifies what trigger to draw and we are going into draw a quad so so gl quads then the second one uh, we have to give the first vertex text we are going to draw in our array and yeah it's just the index in the array and it will be zero and then we have to give the amount of vertices to draw and it is four so if we run this, we get a red square. So just as before, but now we use vertex arrays. Okay. In the next video, we shall uh, we shall load a texture and display it on screen. Okay. See ya. Then bye.